you get lots of first digits seven, so that wouldn't work too well. And then assigned numbers, and assigned number is a number that we use as a label. And we flat out love to use numbers as labels. Highway numbers, room numbers, flight numbers, bank account numbers, and the like. Well, let's have a look at some data that follows Brentford's law. This is one of my older data sets, the 1990 census. So we have the counties, I'll come up. We have the counties over here, and I'm in California at this stage, and we have the populations according to the 1990 census. There are 3,141 counties, and there still are 3,141 counties, 3141. The first four digits of pi. That is just optional extra. This is extra footage back at the end of the DVD. <laughs> but we just put the extra footage right in the main show now. A question from Professor John Covers. You said it's not constrained. Is it constrained? But it's measuring things, so is it constrained to positive number? Good call. We can start with zero. So we can have zero as being no our, 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 our bottom limit. Negative numbers are OK, but I, I, didn't, I didn't want to range that is constrained by something else that isn't an integer power of 10. <laughs> that zero is an acceptable flaw. flaw. Let's have a look. I have the uh, population numbers uh, over here. Uh, that's not there. We have 3,141 of them. And let's have a look at the graph. Thank you very much. I'll take a round of applause to just uh, keep this going. Okay. A round of applause. Thank you very much. Just keep it quiet <laughs> so that you can hear me. Here we go. <laughs> One through nine. The dark center line is Benford's law. The bars are my actual proportions. And so when the height of the bar, the actual and the expected are at the same spot, that means that uh, it fitted whatever curve I was expecting it to fit. And in this case, Benford's law. That indeed is a very good fit to Benford's law. Well, we'll stay along with some numbers that follow. One of the things I like to look at is the stock exchange data. And the Wall Street Journal has the year in review. And what it gives is the volumes for each company for the entire year. Look at that. Those were the volumes for 1995. I remember doing that graph in Excel version <coughs> 4. That is an absolutely beautiful fit to Benford's law. It brings just a little lump to my throat <laughs> every time I look at that graph. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. Now let's have a look at something else. Back to uh, monetary data. These are credit card purchases. So employees have purchasing cards. This is a federal government agency. We have 30,000 transactions for the year, about $100 million. And the employees purchase with the purchasing cards. And these are the dollar amounts of the purchases made with purchasing cards. First digits, very good. First two digits. So each number can have a first two digits as well. For example, the year is 2008, so the first two digits are two zero. The first two digits, a reasonable fit, but what was rather interesting here is that I have a spike at 24. That tells me I have more numbers beginning with 2-4 than expected. And just as your uh, project says, what I would expect, there was a limit as to how much you could use the card for, $2,500. And what I see is many numbers coming in at $2,400 and change. And what this tells me is that they are circumventing the controls. There are more purchases in the $2,400 space than I would expect. And the nice thing is that Benford's Law gives me an expectation. It tells me what to expect, and then I get the actual, and I can clearly say I have more than expected. I like this one too. This was done in J.R. Ewing's building in downtown Dallas. The company said I could use their graph as long as I had blanked out their name. I said I would do that for you. And so what we have there are 2 million records, $56 billion of transactions, and the dollar amounts follow Benford's Law. Very nicely. This is another example. This is a city in North Carolina. And these are the accounts payable amounts, about a quarter million records, the dollar amounts, and it fits Benford's law nearly perfectly. Well, a little bit fraudulent data. My students used to have Benford's law projects to do. It really doesn't matter what the course is called. That's just a slight technicality. And one of my students said that she was the bookkeeper at a fast food restaurant, and the owner on a Sunday afternoon would make up the dollar amounts of the daily sales for the preceding week. I thought this was a fine way to start your accounting career, making fake journal entries on a Sunday afternoon. So what we have are the daily sales for all the days of the year. And the graph looked like that. Now I ask you, 
if you can see a difference between Bentham's law and the actual. It's hard to do, but if you use a trained eye, it, it just comes through at you, but you just have to look for the nuances in the graph. However, it is possible that the daily sales don't follow Bentham's law because they are sort of constrained. They usually do somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 per day, so I can live with this. But you also made up the last two digits. So each of these sales numbers had an ending two digits. And the ending two digits, I would expect to be equal, equally distributed. And indeed, this is a very nice test for made up numbers. What you can see here is that the daily sales ended with 40, far more times than what I would expect. And what I also like in this graph is that none of the numbers ended with double zero. So it's very possible that you said, I'm not going to make numbers that end with double O. They look like uh, invented numbers. I'm not going to go near those numbers, but some numbers should end in double zero, even if things like election counts should end in double zero from time to time. This brings me back to about 1995. I gave a talk in Albany, New York, and I was finished at about 12 o'clock, and I thought, you know, Bedford's house is just down the road. Why don't I go and see where Bedford lived? So I found the house, I knocked on the door, a young man answered, he looked a bit tired, told me after you were in night shift. I said a famous person lived here. As you can see, he probably had to buy a first digit one from somewhere else. And that is because the house number makers probably think all the digits are equally likely, so they make equal batches of each digit, not realizing that under Benefit's law, you should make more ones and twos than any of the other digits. But aren't our house numbers somewhat constrained? Actually, house numbers are a strange animal because usually what we're talking about is cardinal numbers, counting numbers. Whereas a house number is an ordinal number. And so it is rather strange that these ordinal numbers also follow Benford's law somewhat. Uh, I know the Benford's law, uh, the Benford family very well. And so we had a bunch in New Hampshire one day. And so here we are talking about my book. And so I've got to know them quite well. Indeed, if you come to my office and look on the back uh, wall, you won't see my columns at the beginning, you'll actually see Frank Benford's columns at the beginning. So, well, we move along. A little bit more interesting here the Clintons. The Clinton tax returns, indeed it was about the little 1990s, and Bill Clinton actually said at one speech, he said, some people have spent more time on my tax returns than what they spent on their own tax returns. So I was watching this and I thought, wow, tax returns, numbers, numbers have digits, digits should follow Bedford's law. So it became a little obsession on my part. I had to see his digits. What I arranged it. There are some of the pages from some of the tax returns. This is the 1989 return. When I got the returns for 16 years, 1977 through to 1992, it was a huge stack, and I thought, I need to team up with a tax professor, and we need to look at those numbers that can be manipulated. And so what could not be manipulated, for example, are totals, numbers brought forward from other pages, and the like. <coughs> so this one is a mystery, even until this day. Dividend income, Minus $26. <laughs> How do you get minus $26 of dividend income? I know it sounds like you're not such a good investment to start off with, <laughs> but something's going on here. So William J. Clinton, Henry Robin Clinton, Little Rock, Arkansas. This is the 1992 front page, and we had all the supporting schedules as well. The White House, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C. I believe I want to go back. We have 16 years of tax returns, 300 income items. I ask you, Benford or not, to be Benford or not to be Benford, that is the, I should get harder there. <laughs> Benford or not, 